The following Cowdog Craftworks video contains little to no joinery, fine woodworking, Japanese woodworking, or Japanese inspired techniques and design. Viewer discretion is advised. A couple of years ago, my father-in-law around the holidays showed me this sketch. Now this is a shelving unit for his massive book collection and also has a little bit of space for a flat screen TV. Now my father-in-law lives in Wapolo, Iowa, which is my wife's hometown. And I, on the other hand, live in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, which is about 1,500 miles away, give or take. This was not really a feasible build for me to do remotely. However, with the recent addition of our daughter back in October, I thought this was a great opportunity for me to actually drive the entire family to Iowa where I could do this build on site. Little did I know that was gonna be a lot easier said than done. So I created a 3D model using Shaper 3D to be able to conceptualize what the entire build looked like, as well as get feedback from my father-in-law remotely. Now the idea is I'm gonna do all the panel work and the rough cuts here in South Florida, and then be able to assemble all the panels on site, install, and do trim work. Now this project basically consists of nine sheets of flat sawn white oak plywood ringing in at a little over $2,000. In an effort to minimize waste prior to my purchase, I mapped out nine sheets of plywood in Shaper 3D and then laid my components out on it so that I could figure out how many sheets I needed to order from the lumber yard and ensure I had appropriate amount of spare material for some inevitable oops moments. Remember that time I said I didn't need a table saw for my workflow anymore? Well, that still remains true. However, I needed to be able to make repeated clean rip cuts, so my good friend PJ Fetcher was gracious enough to let me use his shop and break down the plywood further to its final width. Got a little bit left over, I cut it up, and that's gonna come with me just as some spares. And once I get everything cut down to actual final length, it'll be a lot easier to fit in my truck bed, which has maximum length of 6'5". And since I've gotta bring luggage, tools, baby stuff, it's all gonna have to be kind of on one side of the bed. And I only have a tonneau cover, I don't have a camper top, like a topper. Therefore, I don't have that vertical space. So the fact that everything's gonna pack away nicely and flat in one side of the bed, it's gonna be really advantageous for me. So in the video that uh, I was setting up the bandsaw, I had talked about the fact that one of the downsides of not having a table saw was losing the ability for uh, precise cross-cutting. And this is my solve for that. It's actually my first time using this. Uh, this is a Festool MFT table, and it is designed really for very specific cross-cutting with a track saw. It's got a miter gauge, fence, stop blocks, and this sweet little track setup. Uh, one of the nice things is that it allows for uh, splinter-free cross cuts because you're gonna have the track with the splinter guard as well as the MDF uh, tabletop and it's applying pressure on both those sides so therefore you're not getting that like splintery cross cutting that can happen so often with uh, plywood. I'm just gonna clean up one edge to make sure that it's nice and square, especially since those factory edges are sometimes pretty unreliable. So now that I have that very clean edge here, I can flip it around and then use my stop block on the other side to ensure that I'm getting a consistent uh, measurement all the way through. Here I'm notching out the verticals, which will accept a back panel for stability and mounting, and then the corners of the boxes will be joined using rabbits. This is a pretty high risk yet high reward setup for the MFT table that I've kind of concocted. I flipped the fence around to the other side, put a dead parallel sacrificial board here, and I'm using a 3D printed router plate that's going to fit into the best tool track that is also set up square to the fence. The router here is equipped with a three quarter inch mortising bit and at three eighths depth, which is what I need, it's gonna create that perfect dado for my plywood dividers to slot in. I already tested a piece before, but just in case nobody believed me, And in the event anybody was a little curious or um, I guess skeptical about how square you could be off the back of your track, that's probably as dead on as it gets right there. Say hi. <laughs> and the little baby. Now the road trip itself with a full truck, two dogs, a wife, and a baby was surprisingly smooth, but of course not without its stresses. We were averaging about six to seven hour drives a day and then stopping every three hours to change and feed, let the dogs out, etc. 
Huge shout out to Bucky's or uh, Bussies as the kids call it for being honestly one of the best rest stops in the country. And after about three and a half days of scooting across highways, we arrived at our Airbnb in Burlington, Iowa, just outside of Wapolo. Setting up shop in someone else's home is kind of a weird thing. It reminded me of Toshio Odete's book on Japanese woodworking where he describes uh, shoji makers staying and working in the home where they were building and installing screens. This is the furthest thing from making shoji, but I was always cognizant that I was in someone else's space and I really did my best to clean up after myself regularly and respect that I was not in my own shop. No project is without its uh, you know, issues and problems. And the issue that we ran into here is that the measurement that was given to me is literally one inch too big. The total width is 199. The wall side of that living room is 198. The walls cheat in just a little bit. They're not perfectly square. So if I get everything down to 197, That'll give me the half inch of clearance that I'd like on either side and I can cover that up with trim. I just set my marking gauge to an inch. I'm gonna hit either side, make my cross cuts with the track saw and then re-wrap it and we should be good. In terms of repeatability, I flipped up the stop here. I'm just gonna cut all my tops, bottoms and back panels for that center cabinet on one side using this, flip it around and then reset and then kind of do the same thing. This will give me consistency in my cuts. The back panels require edge banding and I opted to use speed tape to adhere it instead of an iron. Temps in Iowa were pretty low and I have to say I did not have a great time using the speed tape. I did have some off camera issues later with the adhesion and I had to spot treat fairly often with super glue. Now somehow I made this incredibly poor assumption that the unit was just supposed to be a natural white oak finish. Their dining table, chairs, coffee table, etc. were all just natural white oak. However, the room that this is going into is loaded with walnut stained woods. So for finish, I went with trusty Danish oil. This made the most sense to me because it gives that oil rubbed appearance that I like, doesn't look plastic, and it's easy to apply and easy to touch up where necessary. Hey buddy, stepping on the cabinets is not good. Come on. So my idea is that We'll stand each corner up and then we'll put a little glue on it and then screw them in and then kind of come to the opposing corner, sort of do the same thing and then set up the back in the middle and then get it together. Now, one of my favorite parts of this build was working with my father-in-law. He's one of my biggest fans and watches every single video and sure, he did slow me down in some spots, but it was a much needed extra set of hands for some of the more cumbersome tasks. And we got to chat a fair bit about whatever nonsense was on our mind. It actually made me miss the time I used to spend with my dad doing stuff around the house, like flooring and painting and whatnot. Is that pretty flush on that side? Yeah, it needs to go your way a little bit. Seven hour night, I can't complain about that. Uh, I still remember the first time any of my kids slept through the night and you wake up in the morning going, holy sh**, I didn't get up. <laughs> this is the box for the toe kick that the entire unit is going to rest on, just a bunch of butt joints and screws, and I intentionally made it about 8 to 10 inches short on either end so I didn't have to muck around with trying to fit it in the final space. I don't really have any fun tips about leveling this toe kick. If I had a bigger level, I probably would have used that instead of the laser, but you just got to get a butt ton of shims, screw into a stud, and make it work. Ah, ah, ah. I'm a baby. Oh wow, okay, that missed a stud completely. That's one. <laughs> it would not be a Catalog Craftworks project I didn't have to redo some problem that I ran into is this is the upper panel for the center cabinet. Bottom panel for that center cabinet pretty much mirrors it as well. It's not supposed to be a dado because the center cabinet has no shelves on the center upper. And so as soon as we were assembling, we realized this is a problem. Luckily, I have some extra wood, so I'll be able to solve this. And it's also the shortest of the top and bottom panels. It was the only panel they'll have to redo. And it's actually kind of, it's not a blessing, um, it still sucks. I'm kind of running out of time, but we'll make it work. So, psych, just kidding. I 
don't have boards that are long enough. I'm gonna have to figure it out. I'm gonna have to scarf together two boards. I think I can use that as my base because ultimately that'll be screwed into the lower cabinet panel. I'm thinking of just doing a rabbit and then getting that extra length, probably three eighths, do another three eighths rabbit, lay it on top, glue it together. I do have one longer board that is in the room sitting there right now. I was hoping to use that for trim, but that does not look to be realistic right now. Here goes nothing. Part of the drag on this build was obviously doing it while I'm technically on vacation for the holidays with the wife and a newborn. Unfortunately, most mornings after feeding breakfast, getting everyone situated, I wasn't making it to the house to work until about noon. And of course, in a small town, people are asking about dinner just after five. It really felt at first like I was stitching together half days here and there. Plus there was Christmas Eve and Christmas, which were totally off limits. We ended up extending our trip almost a week. And it was during that time I started getting in early and staying late and made some real strides in progress. For the shelves and cabinets themselves, they're all trimmed out in hardwood. Shout out to Menards in Burlington, Iowa for having an awesome selection of finished ready oak trim which made this go a lot faster for me. Now a little double stick tape and ideally you'd want actual double stick tape. I'm using fast cap speed tape which was not really recommended for this application. Fast cap speed tape can be used to actually affix drawer fronts and put on edge bandings. I don't wanna put a ton on here and I'm actually gonna wrap it around the edge just to get some of the excess out of the way. And two or three relatively small pieces and I'll leave the tape on when I do the final glue and nail job at the end. I have this scrap block. This is just kind of cut to an arbitrary width or thickness and really it doesn't matter, but you want it to be uniform. And I'm gonna hold this. This is gonna represent my offset and I'm going to keep this on the inside and then line up my edge with this offset block. And this might take a couple tries. And this is one of the reasons why having a more temporary speed tape option probably better, but now that my trim is set up, I can take my scribe tool and I'm going to adjust it to the height. This would be nice if the walls didn't have this texture on it, but such is life. And there's my scribe line. I can tell it's fairly accurate just because at the far end over there, I have a lot more material than I do on this side here. And that makes sense because the gap is much smaller at the bottom than at the top where it really widens out. So this is the part where the rubber really meets the road. I was struggling a little bit to make sure that I was getting nice clean cuts on very thin strips. Kind of a bunch of different ways to try to, you know, sort of counteract that. I'm just gonna go really, really slowly on this one. I didn't set up any double stick tape. Um, but what I wanna do is I wanna set this to a 30 degree bevel. That way, once I have this cut, I can sand to the line and I can do so fairly quickly because of the fact that there is a bevel. So that material that is just on the edge is going to be removed a lot faster with that smaller bevel point. So I followed the line pretty freaking close. It's probably a little hard to see here on camera, but there's a couple spots that are maybe a little on the proud side. And like I said, that's fine. I can zip that off just by sanding. Now my trim piece, for the most part, fitting almost exactly the way I want it to. There is a little bit of an issue and we'll get to that in a second here. And I'm just gonna run a quick and dirty little bead of glue. When I have this lined up, we are really nice and flush here at the top and at the bottom even. Then my cabinet side is actually bulging out a little bit. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna fire in a brad nail and the tape really is just gonna make it easier. So when I use my wood filler to backfill the nail hole, when I pull the tape away, there's only going to be just a tiny little bit, and that is something that I can stain over quite quickly. So now that I have that, and you can see there's a lot of play there in that cabinet wall. I'm gonna hit one on the bottom. 
I'm gonna try to find a good spot here where it's kind of not quite at its widest. It'll help me get a little more oomph to be able to try to force it into straight. And that there, piece of trim. Scribe to the wall. Quick apology to everyone on the color issues here in the footage. I'm definitely not used to working outside of my shop, but I'm certainly not used to filming outside of my shop. So the lighting challenge has proved to be interesting throughout the day and especially into the early evening. So just hit that like and subscribe for me if you haven't done so already and imagine these weird orange tones through the actual browns that they are. I'm literally sitting on the toilet in our Airbnb right now and I think I figured out what my inspiration is for the cabinet doors on the uh, built-in there. Mitered corners, and then the uh, poles are kind of dropped a little bit lower. Yeah, I think this will work out. Now, once I have it marked, I'll set my stop, and then I can just bang out all of these that I need. And actually, let me use a clamp real quick. Keep it nice and tight to the fence. The slot cutting bit turned out to be the unsung hero on this build for these doors for the lower center unit. I was able to plow a groove for a quarter inch ply panel and I also was able to cut a mortise for a spline to sit in to reinforce the corners. I even got to use my Kana to clean up some burn marks which was a welcome change of pace. These cute little rubber guys are literally called space balls. They compress in the groove to allow for wood movement but also prevent panel rattle. Just to give you a little more context on how tight on time I was for this build, my watch there says it's December 30th at 11.55 a.m. and we had to be checked out of our Airbnb December 31st at 11 a.m. Off camera I did some final sanding and with a helping hand was able to get the cabinet doors mounted without too much trouble, which meant that this build was done. So here's my original model adjusted for walnut color and here's the end result. Not too bad for a build done 1500 miles away from my home shop, if I do say so myself. All the trim is scribed to the ceiling, walls, and floor without a single drop of caulk to be found. All the shelving is adjustable to accommodate for my father-in-law's varying book collection. And I really loved the hardware I found, especially those knurled knobs and brass hinges which were all sourced from Menards. So here we are, from an idea, to reality, to a Christmas wish come true. Cheers, everyone. What a whirlwind of a trip. I honestly cannot believe that I was able to finish this. There were so many moments that just felt like it was sucking all the life and energy out of me. And <laughs> kind of these moments where I just didn't think I could get it done. Feeling very defeated. And it's so strange to me because honestly, with what I do, which is so different from cabinetry, high-end cabinetry, but at the same time, I expected to be able to conquer this. I have very irrational confidence coming into this, and this project humbled the out of me. I have so much respect for people that do high-end cabinetry work. They're scribing trim to walls, really dealing with whatever the house throws at you. This actually reminds me of when I first moved into my house, and I remember the flooring company had sent over a trim carpenter to do all my baseboards. He kept talking to me about how uh, my walls were all out of square, nothing was perfect. And in my mind, I was like, you know, you're the one who's responsible ultimately for making this look good, not for me to give you a house with perfectly square walls. And as I've gotten more experienced, I realized that no house has perfectly square walls. So it's up to the craftsman to be able to make this look good. And for me, seeing the look on my father-in-law's face, seeing how excited he was, you know, to have this finally done in his house, 
I mean, it was worth every bit. Despite the trials and tribulations that I went through, despite, you know, kind of beating myself up around every corner and the stress that, you know, this obviously created, I'm thrilled. I, I'm just so happy to see this in place and to, you know, bring happiness, especially over the holidays, to my family. With all that being said, as always, thanks for watching and see you next time here at Cowdog Craftworks.